courthouse from time to time, and that you are able to enjoy being officially, officially retired, no longer having to come here um, the second Wednesday of every month, and that you find good fishing wherever you go. Yeah. Um, I think Mr. Matthews would like to get a picture with you all. I think Stephanie was going to do that really quickly, and then we'll continue on with the agenda if we can take 30 seconds to do that. All right, everyone. Thank you. It's all in the picture? Yes. Yeah. We'll do one sitting down. Okay. <coughs> John, I'm going to use my camera, and I'm going to send it to you. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, stand up, please. <laughs> all right, all right. Is this, all right? Is this the group hog one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you, guys. Oh, thank, thank you, John. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank and you. she has to go to Panorama. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, moving on from there, Commissioners, we have two or one item, excuse me, that will be on the consent agenda. The second item there, um, item B, is actually being continued. We have a number of cases on the regular agenda. As you know, we have limited seating in the boardroom still. So, Commissioner Rosenthal, if you could, between... Um, cases pause for a moment so that Stephanie can bring people in uh, and commissioners that is all that I have currently okay all right um, motion on the agenda then motion to approve the agenda second we have a motion on the floor to approve the agenda and the discussion Roll call vote. John Matthews? Yes. Kerr Bukowski? Yes. Mark Denny? Yes. Bill Smith? Yes. Rocky Hempel? Yes. Tom Diles? Yes. Jess Fink? Yes. And I vote yes. The motion carries 8 to 0. All right. Any declarations, anyone? Now we'll start off with uh, case number DEV 21-030 and 031, Sunnyside Estates, consideration of preliminary and final plat for Sunnyside Estates located on a, oh, on all of lot 1A Heartland Estates in Lenworth County, Kansas, also known as 0000 Evans Road. Request submitted by Han Surbang. This is not a public hearing item. Staff report. Chairman, this is case number DEV-21-030 and 031. This is a request for a preliminary and final plat. The applicants are Mr. Allen and Marion Stork, and Mr. Joe Herring was actually the surveyor on that, so I apologize for that um, miscommunication there. Um, this is a 10 and a half acre tract of land that is located near 166 and Evans Road, as you can see. The applicant is proposing a four-lot subdivision. Uh, this subdivision would be a cross-access easement subdivision, so a private roadway. The proposed development, like I said, is located on 10 acres. The development meets the requirements for the zoning district as far as lot size, road frontage, and such. Um, however, it doesn't meet the current access management policy. The current access management policy requires there to be 1,300 feet between roadways on either side of the road. Um, this does not meet that 166th Street, I believe it's 1,200 feet, and then there's also a roadway to the west that is about 400 feet. There's also that existing driveway directly to the west, and it doesn't meet that driveway spacing requirement. As you're all aware, we have amended the access management policy that um, the Board of County Commissioners has not yet officially adopted that. They had a couple of items they wanted us to revisit. Um, one of the items that we are all in agreement with is that the roadway spacing on the adjacent side of the roadway will no longer come into play. Um, so this will in this will not be impacted by that if that policy is to be adopted. Um, and then also the driveway there directly to the west is in conflict. It's much too close. You can uh, you can see there it's about 135 feet. It needs to be about four times that length. The property owner directly to the west there who owns that existing driveway has agreed to decommission that driveway, remove that driveway, and they will take access off of the cross-access easement. So that will no longer be in conflict. We are currently working with the, both the property owners on making sure that the access agreements um, and such are 
very well written so that it's very clear that from henceforth all access will take place off of that cross access easement once that driveway goes away they will not be granted another driveway um, we're in talks with that I don't think that's going to be an issue however that being said with the current access management policy that we have this does not meet that and so staff can't recommend denial of this again once that policy is adopted this will be in conformance with it so I just don't want there to be any confusion my staff is recommending denial it's simply because it doesn't meet the policy that we currently have wouldn't it be better to table it than deny it because don't they have to wait a year not for a plat they don't have to wait a year okay. the applicant wanted to go ahead and and bring it forward okay my question would be don't you have it in the staff recommendations the access agreement shall be approved by county staff prior to the recording of the plat yes that is for that driveway that's not the access management policy okay I mean would table it be something we shouldn't do I mean I, I would still think my recommendation was that this waited to go until the policy had officially been adopted I don't like putting the cart before the horse the applicant like I said I made it very clear that I would have to recommend denial of this because it doesn't meet the current policy wanted to go ahead and bring it forward certainly if the Commission wishes to table it the Commission has every right to table it. Oh, I mean, if we deny it then it has to go to the County Commissioners as a denial correct by that time they might have that access even worked out right the access management policy. policy so two different two yeah, different right. accesses yes right. but yes the policy I'd be worked out and we could just delay it's, it a month and right so we are proposing to take the amendments to the access management policy next Wednesday is when it's scheduled to go um, yeah. I don't know if there will be additional amendments though or not okay well we don't know what the outcome is right. either. exactly sure. Any other questions of staff? Anyone? Does the applicant wish to speak? <coughs> Good evening, Commissioners uh, and staff. Joe Herring, Herring Foot Range, 315 Fifth Street. The, definitely understand the reason for denial. It doesn't meet the current policy for staff review. And as for tabling, it, it is our wish and the client's wish to not table this. We've been working hand, hand in hand with staff and it's taken a while to get to this point. We are aware that hopefully the access management policy will be approved next week on Wednesday and aware that if it isn't, that will delay it. But instead of delaying it here for another month and then another two weeks, which is six weeks of time frame, we are asking that you make a decision this evening, whether for approval or denial, uh, approval with the staff recommendations as listed, which we have read and we agree to. And uh, that's what we're asking for is uh, the approval with the recommendations as it's noted in the staff report. Okay. Any questions on the applicant? Okay. Thank you. Question for Crystal, if I could. Is it possible to take action on a contingent basis, or do you, is our option only one or zero? Is this a binary decision? Or? I believe it's binary, and let DVP um, speak more clearly to that but I believe your action your action options are approve deny or table or modify the conditions Commissioner Dials and then other members of the Commission if I could offer this suggestion uh, you could move to deny with an annotation that this denial is based upon the fact that the current cross access easement policy does not allow this in the event the cross access easement policy is amended that you would basically change your recommendation of denial to approve basically uh, you could forward it and you could approve it with the assumption that it might change however I think crystal is correct you've got one of three options yay nay or table if the applicant is asking you to proceed and not table it uh, I think your staff it's incumbent upon your staff to recommend denial but I think you could issue that denial with an annotation uh, basically in essence instructions to the board as to the uh, possible change in that recommendation just to if the applicant really is desirous of proceeding uh, I would just offer that as a possible option because otherwise you issue a denial right. Any other 
questions? Any additional information to be presented? No, sir. Again, any other questions or comments? I'll entertain a motion. I move that we deny case DEV 21-030 and 31 Sunnyside Estates with the specifications that council just stated. Second. I'll second it. I'd like to have that, uh, that motion explained to me, either by legal counsel or whatever, what that actual motion means. Make sure I got it correctly. Well, I believe the motion would be to uh, issue a recommendation of denial to the Board of County Commissioners and add additional language, basically in the form of an annotation, a little asterisk, and then an asterisk down the bottom that this denial is based upon the fact that the current access easement policy dictates a denial in the event that the board were to adopt a revised access easement policy that would bring the property into compliance that your denial would in essence change to a recommendation of approval okay that's my motion okay <laughs> well I, I just want to make sure <laughs> yeah i hope they got yeah, it right. was explained there but it is uh, well stated right. terry huh it is has a question <laughs> Joe, <laughs> I'll let you talk without being on record. <laughs> <laughs> I, I understand the motion, but if, and this is probably for counsel, if this goes 9 0 in favor of that motion for denial, does that make it have to go 4 0 at the board, or does it change if the policy is approved? I think it changes if the policy is approved, and that's the purpose of the annotation. Just wanted that clarification. Thank you. Okay. All right, does everybody understand the motion? Any discussion? Roll call vote. Tom Matthews. Yes. Eric Bukowski. Yes. This is yes to deny, right? Yes, right. Deny. yes to yes. deny with the idea that. With the annotation. Right. Okay. Did, did Mark Benny. Would you say that again, Wolf? Yes. Uh, Wolf Smith. Yes. To deny. Rocky Hempel. Yes. Tom Dial. Yes. Yes, Spink. Yes. And I vote yes. Motion carries. Eight to zero. Uh, the Board of County Commissioners will consider this item at 9 a.m. on the June, June 23rd, 2021 at the Lemwood County Courthouse. Anyone want, wants to attend the Board of County Commissioners meeting, they will need to contact the Executive Secretary of the Board of County Commissioners Office at 913-684-0417 as space is limited. Of course. So, Mr. Herring made a comment about if, if our vote here is nine to nothing, the commissioners, the county commissioners, has to be unanimous. That's I've so, never heard of that. So, yeah. for a rezoning or a special use permit, if there's a recommendation of denial, the board of county commissioners had to they can overturn that if they have a two thirds majority vote. So, a four in our case. It'd be at least a four to one vote um, or they can send it back to the planning commission and even if the planning commission sends back their original recommendation they can they can go ahead and, and approve or deny either way with just a simple majority i don't that's, believe that's the case for plats though that's only if we deny it. to we overturn a planning commission's recommendation any either way i believe that's what the statute with respect those Statutory provisions apply to rezonings. This right, zone, yes. Not, not okay. Just, well, special use permit is a rezoning. Yes. Not plats. Because I, I, I think the, one of the cases we heard last month, it was unanimous here to approve a special use permit. And the county commissioners, I believe, overturned that. But it, I think it was 3 to 2 vote. If I, I'd have to check, Commissioner. I'm just. I just have never had heard that, so that, that was news news to me. Yeah, that's news to me. Have you had? I'll have to check if it's a recommendation or if it's recommendation of denial, and I'll get back to you. Okay. And yeah, I, I'm just curious because that's that's new to me. 
Thank you. Okay. Case number DEV 21-022, consideration application for a special use permit for athletic training facility located on a track of land in the northwest quarter of Section 32, Township 10 South, range 20 uh, to the east of the 6 p.m. in Leavenworth County, Kansas. Quest submitted by Trent West, also known as 19897 178th Street, does require a public hearing. Uh, comment is limited to three minutes per person. Staff report. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, before you, you have uh, case DEV 21022 uh, for TNT baseball. This is a special use permit application for an indoor athletic training facility. Uh, it is located at uh, 19897 178th Street. Uh, the property size is about 12 acres, give or take. Uh, this is um, a baseball facility that, uh, going through the uh, factors to be considered, uh, the character of the neighborhood, uh, the area surrounding the parcel, this property, is rural. Uh, primarily, it is rural residence, residences and agricultural uses. Uh, the property is currently zoned RR 2.5. Uh, the property, the, the area is in a location that is suitable for agricultural and rural land uses. Uh, and then the relative gains to the economic development and public health and safety, uh, it could, uh, would provide a certain amount of income for the applicant, uh, but with the conformance to the comprehensive plan, the future land use map shows that this is actually an area uh, to be considered uh, with residences uh, with three units to an acre. Uh, so it is, a, it is scheduled to be a, a denser development area in the county. The uh, applicant uh, first submitted uh, a uh, permit for a building application back in 2020. Uh, the staff was not made aware of what the use of the uh, facility or the building was going to be at the time. Uh, once uh, staff heard about this and uh, another uh, baseball facility, we spoke to Mr. West uh, and uh, to start the proceedings for the special use permit. And he's been a uh, willing participant in, in the special use permit process. Uh, this property is currently located on a gravel road. Uh, from the staff report, it is uh, about 290 feet south of a paved surface on our 178th Street. Uh, the uh, applicant has added parking uh, to a secondary access cut uh, about uh, 100 feet south of the, uh, of the initial uh, driveway for the home. Uh, and has established uh, parking along the area, uh, along the driveway back to the uh, facility. Um, the uh, applicant is proposing to use this as a training facility for local youth baseball teams. Uh, they are looking to establish a number of, of uh, teams to be their, their special designated like, uh, TNT baseball teams that, they, that Mr. West will help train uh, for during the off season of uh, baseball season, so roughly uh, January through March. Uh, and then uh, the applicant proposes that there would be about nine to 11 vehicles per practice uh, coming to the, to the facility. So that would be a total of four one-way trips as most parents would be dropping their kids off, leaving, coming back, and then leaving again. Uh, the staff has the following concerns. Uh, the potential for growth of the business uh, would place a significant commercial endeavor in the midst of a rural residence, uh, residential and agricultural area. Uh, there could be negative interactions with the surrounding neighbors and uh, potential future developments. Uh, the amount of traffic induced by this business uh, could interfere with neighboring pro properties uh, and the spacing or the access for 178th Street uh, for customers and neighbors during practice changeover times could cause conflict between the property owner and local neighbors uh, and then the usage of the property for the purpose of an athletic facility uh, training facility does not fit the nature and character of the neighborhood nor does it fit in with the future land use map that is all i have i stand open for questions so, so are you 
saying no? <laughs> Sorry, yes. We, the, the recommendation for the staff is to deny this application. Uh, so, again, my apologies. Thank you for What is the question. difference between this and the same one we heard a month ago for the baseball training facility? Tell me the difference. So, Commissioner, this is, they have significantly more teams that are slated to come. They also, according to their website, are, while they are saying that they are going to operate primarily January through March, um, they allow use of this building all year round. So it is not just a seasonal use, it is all year round. They are also proposing to put on um, clinics and camps. Whereas the other was strictly one team comes in, they practice for an hour and a half, and then they leave, and there's two teams a day, tops, who are coming in. So um, there was significantly more traffic being generated for this particular business than the other. I don't see a lot of difference between this and the one we approved. But last the month. The other one, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't the county commissioners uh, deny that one? You are correct. They, did. they denied it, so they didn't use, need a special use permit, so they can do whatever they want to do, right? I would not go so far as to say no. that. <laughs> That's the way it was explained to me. Okay, what? Okay, here. Tell me what them denying that, because they said they didn't need one. That's what I understood. That they did. No, they cannot operate it commercially. They can operate it for personal use. They cannot operate it for commercial use. Is this one going to be operated for commercial use? Yes. So, so they can't advertise. They can't accept money. Uh, they could. The other one that we're talking about could be used. You know, my my kid and his friends can come over and use it. Is what the intention is. But they do charge. They are not. They are not allowed to use it commercially any longer. If they use it commercially, then we will go through a series of steps to okay. codes court. So the difference is, if they start charging, then then they would have to go back for a special use permit or something. I'm just trying to understand how this works. <coughs> well, after a year, if they wished to reapply for a special use permit, they they could. But in that year time frame, and up until a special use permit were approved, if that were the case. It cannot operate commercially. So if they start charging? One of the ways that, yes, one of the things that we look at in determining whether or not something is personal use or commercial use is whether or not um, it's, they're charging a fee to use the facility. That is one criteria, yes. Okay. I thought they had stated they were charging. Right, they can't do that anymore. They can't do that anymore. They cannot do that anymore. Okay. Got it. All right. Any other questions? Oh, what are, you, what are the conditions? Conditions are. Conditions. That's right. We offered um, conditions in, in the event that the Planning Commission wished to recommend approval of this. Staff's recommendation is denial. Okay. All right. Any other questions of staff? Upon opening the public comment portion of this hearing, those of you who wish to speak either for or against this item upon recognition will give your name and address each time you begin to speak. This is necessary since the public hearing is being recorded. The public comment portion is here is now open. Uh, also, except for the applicant, everyone is uh, wishing to speak for or against the item is limited to three minutes per person. Does the applicant, will the applicant please come forward? Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Colonel West. This is my wife, Erica, and we are the property owners applying for the special use permit. There's been a lot of information that has been shared with the planning and zoning staff and yourselves. We wanted to take a few minutes to tell you in our own words what we are looking to do. We are requesting a special use permit to provide indoor practice space and private lessons for TNT baseball teams and players. The facility was initially built to create a place for our own teams to practice throughout the year. We currently have three teams that utilize the facility on a regular basis, a 13U team, a 10U team that our sons play on, and one other 6U team that is coached by a family friend. 
We want to clarify up front <clears throat> that this request does not include an outdoor baseball field, as has been mentioned in some of the letters. We understand that a special use permit was recently denied for a similar request, but believe that there are some important factors which differentiate our request from the one that was denied. Most, most notably, our property sits on 12 acres, and there are no neighbors directly on any side of the facility. <clears throat> the previous sub was requested for 2.5 acres. We have ample space for parking on our property and have no issues to date with parking. While we do have some neighbors that have expressed disapproval, as you will have seen, we have some neighbors with significant land holdings that completely surround our property that fully support this initiative. While there are similarities in nature of these requests, we hope that you will consider our request with open minds and consider the important differences between our request and others that you have recently heard. In the previous board meeting, nearly all of the commissioners expressed their support of the principle of this initiative, which is similar to ours. However, they did not believe the location was suitable. Comments were made by the commissioners expressing that should this property uh, be five to 10 acres, that the discussion would be much different. We believe that our request is more in line with what the board would uh, consider suitable. Some background and our main objective. When we moved to Leavenworth County in 2009, our oldest son was two years old. Having uh, both played uh, competitive baseball and softball uh, ourselves at the collegiate level, we started uh, both of our boys in baseball at a young age. After spending a couple of years playing locally, we discovered that the availability of baseball academies and facilities throughout the metro that offered more competitive options, however, there was nothing similar in this area. As a result, we had to go elsewhere to find what we needed. Having coached competitive youth baseball for a number of years, I know that there are families looking uh, to us and would welcome the local option. Our primary objective is to provide an opportunity to foster and grow baseball in Leavenworth County. We have seen many examples of talented players <coughs> who have dispersed around the metro as there were nowhere to go locally. Our goal is to provide a place closer to home for those players to go and develop their baseball skills. We have received multiple inquiries just within the past few months from families who are looking for an option just like this. We feel that the overall objective of developing local youth baseball is getting lost in this process, and that there are misconceptions about our plans. Our players range in age from six to 14 years old currently. At the end of the day, all we're trying to do is offer a place for local kids to go practice and learn how to play America's favorite pastime, baseball. As far as our facility, it's a 60 by 80 full barn that will be used for this purpose. The building can uh, facilitate only one team at a time hence requiring a cap on the number of teams. As previously mentioned, we currently have three teams. It would not anticipate having more than eight should we reach our growth goals. Our property is on roughly 12 acres, and we have a parking lot that is sufficient to hold up to 12 cars. Teams typically have nine to 11 players and two to three coaches, who are also parents. There will not be a need for vehicles to park on public street. As previously stated, this request is for the use of an indoor facility only. We do not have plans to develop a commercial baseball field on our property, as was mentioned in some of the uh, opposing letters. As such, impact on the neighborhood should be minimal, i.e. no bright lights, loud noises, trash, etc. As far as traffic, the property is located roughly between Leavenworth Road and State Avenue on 178th Street. Three quarters of this road has been asphalted with one half mile left is gravel. Our property sits on that gravel portion of the road. We are very hopeful that at some point Leavenworth County will finish the small portion on the road that, re that remains. <clears throat> but in the meantime, it is gravel directly in front of our property. We have inquired regardless, uh, regarding the future plans for finishing this road and have not yet been able to understand the long-term plans. From the neighbor, uh, neighbor letters, this appears to be a point of contention unrelated to our plans. We are aware of some concerns regarding the dust that could be created, but it is worth noting that the properties in question who have opposed this permit all sit on a dust abatement portion of the road that has been asphalted. As such, we don't believe the additional traffic 
should cause significant uh, dust concerns for them. The neighbors that we have full uh, support from all sit on the gravel portion of the road and have not raised this as a concern. You will hear from some of them uh, a little bit later. <clears throat> we have provided a range of information for the traffic Im impact assessment based off of our current experience and the anticipated traffic if we were to reach our goal of eight teams. It is important to note that on average, under all scenarios, we are well below the 48 vehicle trips per day threshold noted in a special permit application. As far as the building usage, as stated in the documents we have previously provided, expected hours of operation are 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday and 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. Use of the facility is by appointment only and must be reserved through us. We both reside at the property and work full time from home so are able to easily manage the utilization of this building. <clears throat> the building can only be used by one team at a time for a total of 9 to 11 players. Practice times range from 1.5 to 2 hours. In the peak times, we would expect no more than two practices in the evening on the weekdays and an average of four practices each weekend day. We expect usage of the facility to be seasonal with peak of activity expected in the winter months, January through March, and when there is inclement weather. We anticipate the building usage to drop off dramatically between April and December. As far as neighborhood support, while we are aware that some of the neighbors have expressed resistance to this permit, these residents sit on the paved portion of the roadway. It should not be significantly impacted by dust. There were other concerns expressed regarding previous investment in the roadway that have since been superseded with blacktop uh, completed by the county, which makes the argument less relevant in my opinion. There were also concerns regarding adding a baseball field and additional buildings on the property. We will not be doing any of these things, and we obviously would have to obtain permits if we were to add on. The majority of our land sits in a floodplain and is not suitable for a field or additional buildings. We also take exception to the insinuations that we were deceitful during the process. We were unaware of the county requirements requiring a special use permit. We believe since we were not in the city limits that this use of the property would not present an issue. But as soon as we were notified by the county, we promptly began that submission process. It is important to note that we have obtained support from our neighbors who completely sur uh, surround our property as seen on the GIS map survey. In total, we have support from neighbors around us uh, owning over 140 acres combined. In contrast, the four neighbors expressing resistance account for 28 acres per the GIS survey. You will likely hear from the Jacobs and the Coopers in today's public comment session. You will also hear from the Leavenworth County residents in support of this initiative. As far as staff concerns, the staff has indicated concerns regarding the growth of the business and the quote unquote significant commercial enterprise. <clears throat> I personally would not consider this a significant commercial enterprise. I wish that there were tiers under that definition of commercial use as I believe this is a low level commercial venture. We both have full time jobs that we do not plan to leave to grow this business. This is just truly a service that we believe is lacking in the area. Due to the seasonal nature, we believe it would be cost prohibitive to run this as a full time commercial business in the area. While our goal is to serve as many teams as we can, we would never have more than eight and we have the ability to limit the activity within the building when needed. The estimates we provided represent our most conservative estimates, and we would expect actual activity to be lower than the highest estimate. If we need to further limit activity to alleviate this concern, this is something that can be discussed, and I'm open to that dialogue. The staff has indicated concern with change over times. <clears throat> we purposely stagger our practice times to alleviate traffic congestion during change over times, and we'll continue to do so. We leave, we leave 15 to 30 minutes between practices to ensure we don't have too many vehicles coming and going at the same time. The staff has also indicated concern that the use of property does not fit the character of the neighborhood. I honestly don't know what that means. We live on a rural street with houses that are spread out. In fact, the nearest home to the building besides our own is well over 500 feet away. This setting is the perfect place for kids to come and play in our facility. We also moved to the country so that we could spread out and enjoy the peace and quiet. Allowing other kids to come over and use our facility does not take away from the rural nature of the area. 
The majority of our neighbors are not even able to see this building from their homes. We have provided pictures of the buildings from the different angles that will, will reflect this. And also in closing, I just want to thank you for considering this request, and we would be happy to address any questions or concerns that you may have. Any questions of applicants? Have, have you been approached by people who are against this? No, How do you know there's people against it? No. it? There was letters in the pack. There were letters in the pack? the letters in the packet? There was four letters in opposition. But we believe we've covered all of the points that yeah. they raised within our narrative that we've just gone through. No, I, a saw, lot of the, was I saw the letters supporting it. I didn't get those. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, didn't you get an email packet? Yeah, I did. I didn't. Well, they were in there. I missed that. Okay. I, I have a question on a sort of a related issue. What is the TNT Baseball Academy? Is it an organization that the two of you own, or, or what? Yeah. Well, TNT stands for Transforming Natural Talent. So we, um, myself and my wife, she wouldn't uh, admit this, but she was an All-American College uh, softball player. I played collegiately as well. And we understand what it takes to play at the next level. Not rec ball, not single A, not double A, not triple A, but major baseball. And that's what's lacking in this area. We saw that need. And we saw kids and parents disperse and leave Leavenworth County to go to Johnson County to get what wasn't presented here. And I think that we can offer that. Um, I think you'll hear today that uh, others think that as well. Uh, so to answer your question, it's an academy that teaches um, you know, the principles of baseball um, uh, and, and, and things that transcend baseball. Um, how to work within a team, how to communicate, discipline, integrity, respecting the game, respecting each other. That's what Team T is all about. So the two of you have ownership of it. Okay. Yep. Any other questions of the applicant? No. Uh, I just have one, Steve. The uh, facility doesn't have water right now. Is that correct? correct? Okay. Uh, restroom facilities. Not in the building, but we have some in our house and okay. in a few instances where people have needed it. Okay. We have let them use it. And I would say they're really only coming for an hour and a half to two hours at a time. I mean, people are planning accordingly, if you will. But in the instances when we need it, we do have that available. Okay. And I think that was one of the conditions as well. That's how you have to have a bathroom. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. We'll now hear from you in this individuals present wishing to speak in favor of this request, favor of this request, please state your name and address and you are limited to three minutes. My name is John Zimmelman. I live at 200 in Baser, Kansas. Um, my son's played for Trey for, or Trent for five years now. Um, I think he kind of undersells what the academy is. You keep calling it an academy. To me, it's more of a school. They, he, they teach more than baseball. Um, again, my son plays at a major level on his 13U team. Has played for him for a long time. I want my son to be able to play where we live. I want my kids to be able to have friends where they're at with all these kids here that are going to go to major schools, Tongi schools, wherever it may be, to, to be able to play together during the summertime. Um, there is a big need for it here. There isn't anything here. And our only option is to go to Johnson County. I don't want to spend my money in Johnson County. Whether it's taking him there, whether it's buying gas to take him to practice, whatever it is, this is something that wasn't here. And I think what he's done for these kids and what he's done for the parents, I mean, we're not spending money driving to Johnson County. We're spending money here in Leavenworth County. And I think that's critical to understand when, when they're asking for this. I mean, I, I know there's some special stuff that you've asked for. I read the packet online. Um, those are things that can be accommodated. What we can't accommodate is these kids. I mean, what are we going to do with them now? Where, I mean, to me, this is on you guys today to figure out where do we, where do we start? I know you, you have one you disapprove. This is a separate, completely separate thing. But where do we start letting these kids have a place to go in Lovemore County? Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of this request? <clears throat> I'm going to bring a chair because I'm going to have my son come up with me. He's going to talk to you guys a little bit. I'm going to stand up here. Still on. In three minutes, though. My name is Matt Frex. I live at 1817 North 156th Street, right down the road from Baser High School. Stand up, please. Tell them your name, please. My name is Noah, Noah Matthew Frex. 
What? What? How old are you? Uh, ten. What team do you play for? TNT Sam. TNT Sam. How many kids on the team are you friends with? All of them. How many kids on the team do you go to school with at Baser? <laughs> All of them. <laughs> <laughs> so it's more than just a baseball team to you. It's your, it's your friends from school. Yeah. Okay. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a baseball player. In the major leagues, right? Yeah. Who do you want to play for? I want to play for the Houston Astros. <laughs> okay. My son's written a letter um, that he's going to read to you guys about what the baseball academy means to him. What TNT Academy the facility means to me, it, it plays close to home to practice, get better at baseball. It plays where I can feel safe in practice. It plays to be with my friends and have fun playing sports. It plays to go when it rains or snows so that I can still get better at the game. I am asking you to please approve this permit for your in, our indoor facilities so that we can continue our love for the game. Thank you, pal. Like the gentleman before we mentioned earlier, we also he has an older brother who's 18. His older brother, when he was growing up, also played baseball, AAA and major. There was nothing around base for the entire time he was playing. We actually went to Smithville, Missouri, and joined the team because that was the closest one that we could find that would take him. So we would drive an hour every Saturday for four hours at a time to practice. This has alleviated a lot of our worries in, in trying to get our kids to practice by having it so close to home. So I'd really like you guys to consider, it's not just for us, it's for the kids. Um, like you mentioned, every kid here that, that's sitting here today goes to school with my son. They're all in the same grade. Every one of the boys that are here have stayed the night at my house. It's not just baseball, it's, it's, it's our family, it's our second family. That's what this means to us. Thank you guys. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of this request? Cool. Okay, my name is Jamie Dieters. I uh, live at 16016 Cedar Street, Baser, Kansas, and this is my son Colton. Um, he plays with Noah and the other boys in the room tonight um, on uh, Trent's 10U uh, team called Sam Hunt. And um, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you guys tonight. And I think the biggest thing is, like what Trent said, it's not, it, it's not baseball. It's teaching these kids, you know, every, every place you look, every place you go, everybody is banging on the kids of this generation of, sorry, they need a place to go. They need something to do. During COVID, these guys had a place to go. I play college football. Whether it's football, whether it's baseball, whether it's agriculture, whether whatever it is, it's somebody that you want your kids to learn hard work, character, working hard, earning your spot. Those are the things Trent teaches. Sorry. Anyway, the, the logistics side of it. Um, he's played for Trent for what, two years, three years now, and. Um, my daughter plays on a higher level team called Select Fast Pitch. Um, she goes, we drive all the way to North Kansas City for the practices. Um, we um, play in Wyandotte County to find a practice facility for her to play at. And that is, again, there's several of those girls, five of the girls that are on her team from Leavenworth County, primarily the Baser area. Um, I'm missing my daughter's uh, Coach Pitt softball tonight at the Field of Dreams to be here tonight and speak with you. Um, I coach football. I coach basketball. I coach, I've helped coach volleyball with the youth sports around here. Um, in those other sports, basketball, every time a school is built, we have a new gym that kind of goes along with that. So there's pretty good resources within the district to go, go for that. Volleyball is similar. Football, we only have about three or four youth teams in the city of Baxter. We have a middle school, we have a high school, we have a practice facility there that we can all use. Okay. When it comes to baseball, the one thing we have is Field of Dreams. And once we started, my daughter started there with her team in late March. Once we got our team assignment, we were able to practice up until the first game on May 5th. In the month of May, excuse me, yeah, since since May, June, all the way through the end of their season in July, we cannot get a practice time. Period. 
even though we're paying our fees up there, the only thing we have time for is games. Because every evening there's games there, every weekend there is a tournament there. There is no other option for these kids to go. And that's the public side of it for, you know, just the youth sports. You know, there's not a rec, rec commission there like there is in Tom and Oxy. I'm not as familiar with that area, but we have played a few sports in Tommy. There just is not another option, not even a practice facility. You know, uh, we can't go do that even at a, public, at a public place. We have to go to Lyco or we have to go someplace else. We go twice a week to North Kansas City. We drive there, we spend our gas money, we buy food on our way back. Um, we spend a lot of our money outside of Leavenworth County. We would prefer not to do that. You know, he's just a few miles down the river. So, uh, okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Appreciate it. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of this request? Uh, Brent Miller, um, 16008 Prairie Way, Baser, Kansas. Um, this is my son, Ella Miller, um, plays on the 10U Sandlot team um, with Coach Trent. Um, so prior to coming tonight, now I have two questions. The first one was, why are we going? This was an easy question to answer. First off, we're here to support Coach Trent and Erica West because they started TNT Baseball Academy for the right reason, the kids. Not to make money, not to say they own a baseball academy, but to coach our youth the game of baseball, and more importantly, to teach our youth the game of baseball through hard work, dedication, and leadership. The second reason is to support the approval of the TNT Baseball Academy indoor facility. This facility allows kids within this area and community of Leavenworth County a place to practice baseball competitively year-round. To, to keep up and be competitive with the Johnson counties and larger cities in Kansas and Missouri, an indoor facility to practice year-round is critical to that success. Participation in team sports promotes health and well-being, builds confidence, leadership, and helps with mental health for youth. TNT Baseball Academy is and had always been about the kids. The second question that Noah asked me was, why doesn't Leavenworth County want to approve this? And this has been a much more difficult question to answer. I've been racking my brain for two to three days trying to come up with a logical answer, but I don't have one. The facility is not in a residential neighborhood. The facility is in the country on the west 10 plus acres of land with houses separated by acreage and is set back away from the road. From our understanding, the facility has met all requirements needed to be in compliance and knowing the wests, we are confident that they have gone above and beyond to meet the requirements needed to operate the indoor facility. We moved the baser from Johnson County in Johnson County, you can drive any direction, and in 10 minutes, you can pass multiple indoor facilities for baseball use. This area and community of Leavenworth County needs the TNT Baseball Academy indoor facility as it provides a convenient place for youth to practice baseball in their own community of Leavenworth County. In closing, we ask that you reconsider approving the TNT Baseball Academy indoor facility the benefits of having a youth indoor facility provides a place to continue developing skills during extreme weather and during off-season times. Both of my children have benefited tremendously from the indoor facility to improve their skills. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of this request? Isaac P. 22184 171st Street, Baser. Henry's going to say a few words. Um, hi, my name is Henry Peak. Um, I go to BIS and I'm going into fifth grade. And I think we should still practice in the facility because we don't like having practice canceled. Having practice canceled doesn't make us better at baseball. We have been. We've been playing good being able to look at the facility this year. I have noticed a big difference in our team this year. We would really appreciate you letting us practice at, it, at, it, at this facility. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of this request? In 
favor of this request. Hi, my name is Dan Adcox. I live at 16710 Hollingsworth Road, Bayshore, Kansas. A um, couple of things. I've known Trent and Erica um, for years now. Are uh, my youngest and their oldest since kindergarten, so it's been six, seven years. Um, I've lived out in the county, Leavenworth. I moved from uh, KCK. I've been out here for about 20 years. Um, one thing I can tell you about these two, they're humble people. Uh, I've got a 16-year-old and a 14-year-old. They're both competitive ball players. And whenever, um, I don't want to drive all the way to Johnson County where there are participants in those academies where I have to drive. I can call Trent and say, hey, man, is there any open spots? And never once has he asked me for a dime. And I do that multiple times. But it's nice to have that opportunity. I, we would never have that anywhere else. I know the facility in Tongi just opened, but like I said, I've been out here 20 years, and I know there's nothing available for us. So I thank them for that. But that's the kind of people they are. This isn't for them to make money. This is about the kids. You know, and, and one more thing, in the 20 years that I've been out here, I've seen a lot of progress, especially in the community of Baser. And we do it for tax revenue. We do it for schools. We do it for job creation. But one thing, let's not forget about these kids and that progress. Let's not forget about the opportunities that they can have in a different environment outside of school where they can learn, they can grow, and they can do something constructive. So just keep that in your mind, please, when you guys make your decision. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Hello, my name is Crystal Kuderbaugh, and my husband and I live at 1816 160th Terrace in Baser. Um, and five years ago when we moved to Baser, we struggled to find a team for our now 14-year-old son to play on. He bounced around to a couple of teams um, because our family, we have four children, was not willing or able to drive several hours to attend an academy that would push him. So he was on a couple of teams that didn't develop him. And two years ago, he joined Trent's Blue Jay team, and the kid has flourished. He is more competent than he has ever been, and I attribute that to the work that Trent has done. He believes in him, and he pushes him, and I'm forever grateful for that. And much like what everybody else has said, there's just a, a lack of baseball facilities and fields in in the community of Baser, and this provides an opportunity for our youth. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of this request? Favor. We have three phone calls. Three phone calls. Okay. Are they in favor also? Okay. Yep. I believe. I do. I'm almost positive. <laughs> No, that didn't work. Uh, Hi, is Mr. Jacobs there? Yeah, just a bit. Mr. Jacobs took it up. Hello. Hi, Mr. Jacobs. This is Stephanie. Hello. Mr. Jacobs. Okay. This is Stephanie. Yes, this, is this is Stephanie at Leavenworth County. I have you here in the Planning Commission meeting about Mr. West's um, special use permit request. You have three minutes. Yes. Would you like to address the commission? Yes, I would. Uh, I guess I'm on speaker right now. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, my name is Henry Jacobs. I'm talking about the Trent West Training Facility. My wife, June, and I live at 19950 178th Street, across the road, approximately 600 feet from the West home, and approximately 800 feet from the baseball training facility. We also own the property on the west, north, and east of the Trent West property. The training facility is located on 12 and a half acres, located in a valley with a creek on the south end. The facility is approximately 500 feet from 178th Street. On-site parking is provided. 
and no car be parked on the street. Bathroom facilities are also provided. All training will be in the building. Some information was being passed around that practices and games were going to be held on the acreage where the facility is located. This is not true. Outdoor training and games will be on baser school fields. My wife and I are the West's closest neighbors in approximately six feet. The rentals is about 700 feet. Other neighbors are approximately one quarter mile or more. We realize that the facility use will create additional traffic. Our road is already heavily traveled, and we believe that additional traffic will not make a significant difference. My wife, June, and Steve, this is a good civic undertaking worth the effort, and we are strongly in favor of it going forward. That's all I have written down here, and I have any questions or anything I'll try to answer. Do you have any questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Have a good night. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi, is this Jason? Yes. Hi, Jason. This is Stephanie. We're calling from the Leavenworth County Planning Commission. You uh -huh. stated you wanted to speak on behalf of Mr. West in support of? Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. You have three minutes. You can go ahead and address the commission. Okay. Um, yeah, I just want to say that uh, Trent West and his wife and family, uh, first of all, are uh, great people and uh, well-respected people in the community. Uh, my son plays baseball for him and uh, has been for the last uh, three seasons. And uh, I've been pretty much in continuous communication uh, with him and the family of uh, the process that they started about a year and a half ago or so on uh, getting the academy up and going. And um, I know that they've made every effort to follow the guidelines that, uh, that the county has directed them uh, and making sure that they do so that they can keep things up and running. So um, I know that they've had, they put a lot of money into it. They've built the building and made sure everything was done the right way. And they've created a separate driveway and made sure that there was plenty of parking and a roundabout. And he's kept track of all the numbers and the traffic flow. And none of that traffic has affected anything in the area. Um, as far as what it brings to the community, um, I mean, I think it's uh, irreplaceable as far as uh, it brings a baseball uh, growth and opportunity to uh, the baser community that it didn't have before, uh, which promotes, obviously, athletics and baseball specifically um, in the community, and it was a need, and he's fulfilling, fulfilling that need. Um, it supports the baser community, uh, you know, with, with money spent in the community. It, uh, keeps the kids from having to travel up. <coughs> and it also uh, set the precedence for uh, future growth in the community because, I mean, I know like me personally, um, I mean, I'm nowhere near, uh, like nowhere near the point where I'm going to start doing so, but it is in my future thoughts to someday maybe um, do something in the wrestling realm as far as starting some sort of um, you know, private club or academy, maybe in the future, and I just know that uh, uh, this is a this is a, something that's a need. It's something that um, every member of the team is would be devastated if now all of a sudden we have to go back to traveling further in order to have practices and um, and do the things and operate uh, without having that close by and to travel to. So, um, as far as uh, his coaching and what he does with the kids uh, is probably the most valuable thing. Um, he's a great person and great with the kids and 
um, just an awesome, awesome uh, benefit to the community as far as uh, the kids being able to have him and that facility to be able to use. Uh, it also is a facility for other baseball teams that aren't even a part of the academy to be able to use and rent out the space. Um, so that's another another plus. So and I just know that uh, it's a big need and has been for a while. So. Um, I can't speak highly enough about it. Um, Sir, that's been program, three minutes. That's been three minutes. What's that? That has been yep. three minutes. Yep. That's yep. your time. Would you mind giving us your name yep. and address for the record? My address? Yes, your name, full name and address. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Jason Allen Kuderbaugh. Do you need me to spell it? No, that's okay. Okay, and my address is 1816 160th Baser, Kansas. Six six zero zero seven. All right. Thank you very much for your time tonight. Yep. Yep. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Bye. Hello. Hi. Is this Mr. Cooper? Yes, it is. Hi, Mr. Cooper. This is Stephanie with Leavenworth County. We're here at the Planning Commission meeting. You're on speakerphone. If you would give your name and address for the record, you'll have three minutes um, to offer your support of Mr. West's application. Okay. Uh, my name is Jared Cooper. My address is 19615 178th Street, Tonganoxie, Kansas, 66086. And I am one of his neighbors, just to the south of him. And I am in full support of what Mr. West would like to do. And I think it will be a benefit to the community and, uh, and for our county as well. All right. Thank you for your time. Have a wonderful night. Thank you. That's it. Without here from the individuals present wishing to speak in opposition to this request, anyone present wishing to speak in opposition? Is there any different additional information to be presented? No, sir. Okay. The public comment portion of this hearing is now closed. Are there any questions or comments, commissioners? What What are the reasons that uh, you're giving for non approval? Again? So, um, as stated in the, the report, um, we are we have concerns regarding, regarding the growth and the interaction of the growth of the, the business with the surrounding neighbors, with the surrounding development of the um, of the neighborhood as uh, Baser looks to grow. I don't know where Baser is planning on growing, but it is located within about a mile, mile uh, 1.1 miles from uh, city limits of Baser currently. Uh, this is scheduled to be, in our future land use map, scheduled to be a neighborhood where there are three units per acre, so three houses per acre. Uh, and uh, we have also concerns on the traffic um, coming to and from. Traffic would be a concern to me, and especially it being on a gravel road. And I know I live on a gravel road, and I paid to have my property in front of my house ship and sealed. And, County did a great job, but it cost me a pretty good chunk of change to have that done. But every time a house, a car comes from the south and the wind comes from the south, I don't know why I did it because I'm just the cloud of dust is just ridiculous. And I only live on that road is only goes a mile. It's not that much traffic on it, but it seems like in the summertime I'm we're living in a cloud of dust all the time, and I can understand. People who live on the road that paid to have that done, and I understand the people who live on the road have to go back and forth. But to have a business with this many cars on it, I would think it's it's it would be I would be upset if something like that came on on my road just for that reason. Is there any plans to chip and seal the rest of that road? It's only a half mile. Is that correct? Yeah, approximately. I had, I am not aware of any plans, public works. Are, are you willing to chip and seal the rest of that half mile? Am I personally? Yeah. Pay to have it done? I don't know how much that costs. Yeah, we have to look into that. I 
my check would be I, done. I can tell you that uh, the people who are in full support of that, of this initiative, live on that ground floor. Yep. I'm sitting for sure. I, I can tell you that the people, um, like you heard from Mr. Jacobs and Cooper, they live on that stretch of gravel road, and they envelop my entire property. And they are in full support of that. The people that are opposed to this live down the road on the dust abatement section. That's what I'm that, talking that, about. Right, That's that exactly what I'm talking about, because I did the same thing, yeah. but I still get the dust. Right. Even though I paid a lot of money to have my property in front of my house yeah. unsealed, when the cars come from the south or go away, coming and going, the dust comes and blows on me just like I didn't do anything. And that's what their complaint is. They they went ahead and paid money to have their road chip and seal from their house so they wouldn't have dust, but they still have dust. Now, you guys live on the road, so of course, you know, that's understandable, but to have a, uh, a business that brings that much more traffic in, means that much more dust. For for the people immediately in that area. I would agree. Well, with that. Yeah. Uh, it's not it, only the believe me, it's not only well, immediately in that area. It's, I, I it goes there. a long ways that dust. Well, uh, if you know anything about the area, that wind blows uh, from the southwest and and that dust is actually uh, heading toward the east in Mr. Jacobs land. And you can see evidence of that. It doesn't travel up the road northward. I would think it would. I, mean, no, I know it's it south of my house. I don't live that far from it. So. <laughs> I, welcome, I, I, I welcome you there if you want to come and check it out. You'll yeah. see evidence of it. Okay. Well, anyway, that's my, my problem with it. I think this is a great venture. I think apparently we need something like this. I think we just need it to where it's zoned for it. I think that's where it needs to go. Somewhere where they could put it, where... A lot of people get to it, and there's plenty of commercial areas around that would be ideal for something like that. And maybe even part of the Field of Dreams could, could uh, build, put a building like that, too. So I think it's a great, great thing you're doing. That's not a doubt in my mind whatsoever, but my mind is, is where you're doing it. And just like the other one, there are, there are people being affected by it, and you might not think there is, but... There are people being affected by it. Uh, the dust, is that what you're referring to? The, the dust, dust and traffic. I mean, it, it is creating a lot more traffic down on, uh, uh, it's still a country road, and I know it's planned to be bigger than that, but right now it's still a country road. So, If I could just add that we, we have met all the criteria for the permit uh, guidelines. Uh, the traffic impact factor, we are well below the threshold that is necessary to meet that criteria. So, even for a gravel road. So, just want to add that. Okay. Anybody else have any comments yeah. or questions? Mm -hmm. What I heard tonight was very emotional, and it, it's a good benefit for the children, but we're not approving a special use permit based on, I'll say, the recipients of the service. We're basing our approval or denial upon the conditions that the staff has pointed out uh, one through four and they themselves say deny it at this point in time I think you, you have to set aside the emotional plea that we heard tonight and deal only with the business at hand can I respond to that please Mark? so I, I feel like we laid out all the data for you and I don't think yes it's emotional because there is a need and parents struggle with that need, and we've addressed that need. But we've also laid out the data that that addresses every concern, every single one. And I don't see uh, any issues after we uh, laid out that reconciliation for every concern. And I'm happy to have that dialogue. But it just seems like it's just a black and white issue. There's no in between. There's no dialogue. And I think there needs to be. Sure, Let's take the emotions out of it and just deal with the data. I'm happy to do that. Yeah, I, I got it. Okay. Amount of traffic induced by the business could interfere with the neighboring properties. Same thing last month, and it wasn't a problem last month. Now, and I get your point about the dust, but we got mud being tracked. 
So the potential for – here's what I see. I don't know why it doesn't fit the character of the neighborhood. It's out in the county. County commissioners last month said they didn't need – or just last month said didn't need a special use permit. It was out in the county. That is – sorry, Commissioner Markowski, <coughs> I have to stop you there. That is not what the Board of County Commissioners said about the last one. They did not grant the special use permit because they felt that it did not – meet the character of the neighborhood it did not meet the comprehensive plan and that it was not located in the right area so I, I think we need to stop saying that the Board of County Commissioners said they just don't need one they said they can't operate commercially can't operate commercially cannot operate commercially and did not grant the special use permit I got it no. No, I'm just I think the benefit to the county and to the development of these young people outweighs these concerns we need these kind of things you look at these kids running around nowadays and they're little shits excuse me this is something where they're being taught character things like that you know and, and yeah it's emotional but i support it doggone we need programs that get kids off the street and teach them good things and these people are doing it they're going about this the right way and i understand it doesn't fit all you know and, and not beating up on you, Chris. You know, I try not to. <laughs> Don't worry. But the, the, the benefit to our community and to our country even of developing young people and teaching them some kind of skills and making them better Americans outweighs You're this. I heard you, John, and well, I don't agree with you. Well, I disagree true. with and you. And we agree to yeah, disagree. We agree to disagree. So that's, that's my thing. Well, there's no doubt it's a need. It's a need. It just, and we should, right we should as far as I'm concerned. help with these needs. Yeah. I think people need to think about where they're putting it before they build it. Well, and, uh, they didn't think about it before they built it. Just, well, like, just like the one we had last week. Right. Last Both month, they did. didn't think about it before they built it. Yeah. They just thought they could do it and just did it. And uh, didn't think of any no. consequences. But I Anybody else have any I have just uh, two questions, Chris. Um, the, uh, did we reach out to the city of Mason? I know it's not in the UGMA, but... No, we did not. It was okay. far enough out that we didn't. So we, we don't know where they stand on this. No, we do not. And then um, on, the, on the recommendations number four, if we were to approve it, the engineered septic system, I mean, it's kind of a catch-22 the way I see it because they don't have water there. So, well, they would have to bring water to the building. Okay, so, yes. I mean, but we're not saying they have to bring water to the building. It just says they need a septic system. Well, I think you can have a septic system without some, well, without, I, so I, I'm just, certainly, just, Commissioner, and if we need to clarify that, then we certainly. But isn't there a house there? There's house, there's water at the property, but, but to the building. Well, the building. but that's just digging a, a line to the building. Right, right. Exactly. I just wanted to clarify yeah. that, I mean, it just can't have one without the other. Correct. We're only requiring to have one, so we're requiring to have both, actually. Yeah. That is a, a fair point, Commissioner. We can clarify that. Was there something else, Mark? No, that's it. Anybody else have anything? Yeah, yeah Mr. Chairman, i got one question for staff. Uh, it's my understanding that it's considered a commercial venture. Uh, how does that affect the comp plan versus residence area with three units per acre? So that would that would be in conflict, right? So if we are calling for this area uh, in the future to be you know, three units per acre, which is a fairly dense residential uh, zoning district, to put a commercial endeavor square in the center of that, could potentially negatively impact development. So you're saying that would conflict with the comprehensive plan? Yes. Can I say something? Only if somebody asks you to. Oh, sorry. Can this lady speak? And you want her to speak? Thank sorry, you. I was just going to say. Please go up there. I was just going to say um, the SEP is for five years, so I don't know that that would be happening is all I was going to say. Any change from the current way that it is to the future use plan. I mean, I don't know what that's happening, but I just wanted to clear to mention that. 
that that probably wouldn't be happening in five years to go from how it is today to three units per acre. Well, the comp plan is already in effect. Yeah. It's not a future. It's already in effect. Okay. Yeah. I, just didn't, I just wasn't sure how we would go from what it is today to three units per acre. So I just wasn't sure how that timeline, like how it would go over. That's one of the things that it's allowed in that area. Yeah. It's three units per acre. Okay. And my question was, is uh, commercial enterprise considered okay with the comp plan? And the way I understand it, it is not. It would not be in conformance, no. It would not be in conformance with the comp plan. Any other comments or questions? I'll entertain a motion. Recommend approval of case DEV 21-022 TNT Academy. Because it well, because the benefit to the community outweighs the conflict with the conflict. I'm recommend approval. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion on the floor with a second. However, we have to go to the conditions then. Commissioners, sorry, if I may. Commissioner Bartkowski, your motion, could you please specifically reference the golden factors that you disagree with staff on as opposed to saying the benefits outweigh the golden factors? I don't think it changes the nature of the neighborhood. I think it's a benefit to the county, to the welfare of the county. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, then we'll have to go over recommendations. And then, as per the recommendations or conditions on the conditions, right. well, let's go through them then. I'm sure, because we didn't discuss them because of the fact that. I think the only thing on the uh, on the south, uh, Mark brought up was that. Uh, you know, I mean, it's assumption you have to have water, but that could be added. That water has to be provided to the facility so that uh, the engineered septic system will work. They've already addressed the parking situation. Um, the first one is for five years. Right, five years. Business shall be limited to the hours of 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. Monday through Friday and 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. Correct. Limited no employees other than family. Engineered septic system. Uh, add in water will be provided to the facility. Any modification of building parking shall meet. Or exceed the floodplain regulations. Appropriate permits shall be obtained prior to modifications of building and parking. The applicants are here to the Memorandums from Emergency Management and Stranger Township Fire Department. No signage, signage is allowed. No on-street parking allowed. Stuff will be limited to the narrative dated <coughs> February 25th. <coughs> Stuff will complain with all local, state, federal rules and regulations that may be applicable after approval of the sub. The Board of County Commissioners all, all conditions listed shall be adhered to and copies provided to the Planning and Zoning Department within 30 days. The applicant did say he understood these correctly. Did you see these, all of these? Sir, come on back up, please. <coughs> did you see these 10 requirements? We have. And you agree, you agree to all of them? Um, we are, if, if that's the only way that we're going to get this passed. Like uh, we had mentioned that up until now, we've, had, we've got three months of history to see what we've done. And up to this point, there have been two incidents where kids needed to use the restroom. We simply escorted them to our house. We've got three bathrooms, one's going through a breezeway to a half bath, and they use that. Yeah, no, that's not It, a, it that's is not a commercial a, facility. So it's a commercial facility, you, you will have to put it. Okay, if, if that's the case, then we're more than happy to do that. Okay. I, don't, I don't see a way around that. All right, that's fine. That. That's fine. Thank you, sir. Yep. Uh, Bill, uh, Mark, uh, Bill Quist. He had some pretty negative comments, didn't he? If I remember he, right. He did, and then he uh, spoke with the, the applicant. We have in the packet uh, a later email where he still outlines things that um, 
the applicant and the West need to do, uh, but it is my understanding that the West have already started working on adding access uh, and moving the um, spacing or moving the access for the fire uh, engine fire trucks to get to the the building in an right. easier uh, and a better fashion. So those so, things that they would have to do. Right? Yes, those are those are as a as a part of six B. Those would still be things that would be required of. Yeah, did Chuck of, have anything different? Uh, he, uh, to my knowledge, it, it consisted of uh, making sure the the exits are well documented yeah. and having a an emergency uh, plan. weather um, plan in place for uh, for, for where their kids can go. Um, yeah. Something to that effect. So. Okay, you've got a set. Yeah, you've got a motion and a second. And with those requirements, and that's agreeable to both of you. Yes, sir. Okay. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. John Matthews. No. And your reasoning? Uh, reasons that I stated earlier. This we're not going against the kids. We're getting the SUP with based on the kids. It's on the facilities in which. These events will be taking place, not meeting the criteria. Okay. Terry Bukowski? Yes. Mark Denny? Yes. I, I would like to add, too, on as far as the traffic goes, because I think to me that's the biggest thing. And, and in the report from Olson, uh, they determined that a traffic impact study was not required um, because of the, the number of trips spread out over the year didn't warrant it. So. To me, that's a, that's a that's a big determining factor. I vote yes. Uh, Wolf Smith. Yes. Uh, Rocky Hempel. No. Reason being is it does not conform to a comprehensive plan. Okay. Tom Dials. Yes. Jeff Speed. Yes. And I'm going to vote no too. And it's really for me. It is the comp plan, of course. We worked hard on that to get that done. But it's also the, the road. And uh, I like you say, living on a gravel road, and, and it's bad enough the regular traffic to have more traffic on it is really, really tough. And hopefully the county will fix that and uh, pave the rest of it shortly. But fine. We have a five to, uh, five to three vote. The Board of County Commissioners will consider this item on June 30th, 2021 at 9 a.m. at the Leverett County Courthouse. Any person wishing to file a protest petition must contact the Planning and Zoning Office. Protest petitions must be filed with Leverett County within two weeks of this meeting. To be valid, the protest petitions must be signed by owners of 20% of the land area and the notification area. Anyone wishing to attend the meeting to give public comment at this meeting, must call the Board of County Commissioner's Office to make arrangement at least 24 hours before the meeting. Good luck to you. And again, uh, it's June 30th at, at 9 a.m. Here, you need to be here because they're our the final decisions. They're the ones who are getting paid to make the decision. So they will make the final decision, yes or no. Thank you. Some time here in the room. Yeah, a couple minutes, please. Thank you. I'm going to need a bathroom break before we start tonight. Bathroom break. Bathroom yeah, I'm going to be on the bathroom break. Go, go, go. Good God. Didn't realize I started going. Hey, Terry. Yeah, I'm going to be on the You know our lawyers rarely take bathroom breaks. Uh, you can't not, bill anyone for it? It's not billable time. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. See, no, when I work private side, we just bill all that time. That was just
It's it's private things. Exactly. <laughs> Deep thought, meditation. Exactly. Oh, okay. That's it. Okay. This awesome. one. This is just the applicant. Okay. So. Surprise. Just we'll have to wait till some of our members come back. <laughs> Like there was a lot of people. You have a phone call this one? Nope. We just had one, uh, the one letter. letter. Yeah. Does anybody ever use composite bows out there? Are you talking recurve or longbow? Yeah. Um, I've helped people with them, uh, but not really. It's a dying yeah. trade. Uh, there's archery business is dying too. Because, I mean, let's face it, today's generation is growing up for instant gratification. So now that Kansas made the crossbow legal in archery season, you can buy a crossbow at Cabela's and shoot it 150 yards in five minutes because of the scope system and everything. There's no training. You don't do anything. But to shoot a real bow, if you go hunting with you, you've got to work. Yeah. I think that was clear that But I would. I would love to have a longbow. There's the reflection. Yeah. Are you a shooter? The only one. I just, uh, I've always liked our crew. Just standard, just walking. It is me. It helps me. With my past career. It's been a long time since I've shot. It's, I just thought it was just relaxed and sport. <laughs> Never thought I was good enough to actually get something that was moving. Oh, I guess that's fair. You order who got there. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, you got a sandwich. Well, I figured I'd just tell you. We've got a fellow who works for the county who hunts, um, made his own. I was wondering. I was a sandwich with your name on it. Yeah. Pretty impressive. He had, goes out to Colorado and looks for the action. What is it? It's pretty impressive. I, I own a recurve. Uh, yes. He was giving me his retirement when I retired from the military. And uh, I practiced with it for a long time. But every time I went out hunting, I wanted to get a personal one. That's the one I can choose. I understand. This yeah. Because I, oh. I don't want to kill deer. And then we never get on there. I don't want to kill deer. I don't want to kill deer. Because that's my recurve. I can't get that big bag. 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 I can't get I got you. All right. If he's ignoring there, I know. I should have that ball going first before I come there. That's why you didn't have a sandwich. Well, I don't like what I have with this. I like the extra sandwich. Yeah. 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 That's true. Yeah. Hey, uh, oh, he was slow. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. 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 You got to get with the program. <laughs> Tom Wolf's making fun of you for being so slow. Sorry? Tom's ma or Wolf made fun of you for being I slow. Yeah. <laughs> Just be glad you can walk. That's right now. That's okay, <laughs> continuing on, case number DEB 21-019, consideration of the rezoning request R5 zoning district to R5 2.5 zoning district on a track of land southeast quarter of the southeast quarter of the section. Chairman? I think we're, I think we're on case uh, DEB 21055. Went too far? Uh, we got the oh, no, we have a we have a well, typo on the... Well, that's not what this one is, so I'm... It, the description is on, uh, is on the, your screen, if you can... It's C on your agenda. Okay. I don't have anything for it, then. You don't have a shell for it? 
Like the, and I have a sheet for it. Okay. Well. I gave him mine. Well, it's not that. It's oh, all the steps I have to take, but I guess I'll, I'll work through it. Can you, <laughs> can you wing it? Uh, okay, it's case number DV21-055, uh, elevated archery. Um, see what else I have to say on it's, here? It, it's you, if you read the if you read the the screen, if you can read the screen screen, that's okay. There we go. Uh, consideration application for a special use permit for a target range for archery lessons and pro shop for bow maintenance. Bow maintenance on lots fifteen and lots forty three and two forty six and parts of lot forty seven and forty eight in Northwoods at Timber Lakes. And a track of land southeast quarter of section 24, Township 11 South, range 22 East, to 6 p.m. in Lemworth County, Kansas, also known as 14702 Timber Lane. Uh, this is a public hearing is required. Public comment is limited to three minutes per person. Staff report. <laughs> Staff report. Uh, so this is a uh, special use permit application for a renewal for an archery range and pro shop. This is a renewal with changes from what was initially uh, submitted to the Planning Commission and Board County and accepted by the Board of County Commissioners. Uh, this is a uh, parcel um, that the initial uh, special use permit, uh, if you look at the screen, uh, was contained to the, uh, the small um, parcel with the, uh, with the house on it, uh, and the applicant is uh, come back to before the board with a request to expand the usage to the parcel to the east uh, and then also to the parcel to the north uh, which contains uh, lots that were platted when the when Northwoods at Timber Lakes was uh, was initially platted uh, this is uh, a, a property parcel that uh, is located within a subdivision uh, the subdivision is Northwoods at Timber uh, Lakes uh, the surrounding properties range in size from 0 0.9 acres to over 3 acres in size. Uh, so this is a, a location that is, uh, would be considered a, a typical suburban subdivision, typical suburban uh, developments uh, within uh, the neighborhood, uh, especially considering the Northwoods at Timber Lakes. Uh, this uh, subdivision uh, ranges, has parcels, um, from half an acre in size to uh, just over two acres. Uh, this is uh, the plat initially had lots coming off of Metro Avenue and those have not been uh, developed. Uh, but the rest of the uh, subdivision, uh, which came through in three plats, uh, has been developed. Uh, the, as I mentioned, this is a uh, increase uh, in usage uh, and the, the footprint of the of the business has expanded uh, greatly. Uh, in the report, I uh, attached uh, the initial uh, proposal for the uh, for the business, which was to maintain all of the targets on the uh, lot that contains the home. Uh, the applicant has come uh, back with a, an application requesting that they're uh, requesting and having tell, told us that there are currently uh, targets and lanes set up not only on that property but also to the west and to the north. Uh, the uh, applicant has uh, in 2016 um, did buy the pro property immediately to the west. In 2018 he added the property to the north. At that time uh, the applicant uh, cuts two entrances and a parking lot into the uh, parcel coming off of Metro Avenue. This was not run through the Planning and Zoning Department nor the Public Works Department. Uh, he has since uh, today dropped off an application for an entrance permit. Uh, there is limited access along Metro Avenue as you can see. Uh, there are uh, four different houses that are uh, sharing two access points uh, there to the north. Um, so it is, uh, it is limited in nature. Uh, the property to the north uh, does have the, the home on the south side of the Metro Avenue does have 
two entrances, but that was also um, built in 1950. Uh, and so those entrances have been grandfathered in, uh, in my research. Uh, the applicant runs a uh, archery business, uh, an archery range, a pro shop, and also maintains uh, other uh, customers' bows. Um, when this initially came through, he was discussing uh, running mostly lessons through the property, uh, being able to, and his narrative focused a lot on being able to teach the next generation of archers in the area. Uh, through discussion, through research, uh, we've discovered that the focus of the uh, business has transferred uh, from the lessons, although lessons still do occur, and especially in the off season, so over the summer months, uh, they do still occur. But mostly it is focused on uh, a couple of nights of league play where um, multiple people come out each evening and um, uh, shoot uh, as a competition. Uh, the, the maintenance shop is also used as a, uh, as a pro shop. There is, he does sell some equipment from the, uh, from the maintenance, uh, I'm going to call it garage maintenance maintenance garage that's in uh, you can see a figure of that in, a picture of that in figure one of the staff report um, so the, the staff has uh, the following concerns uh, concerning uh, the approval of the special permit the applicant has expanded the business uh, without regard uh, to the narrative provided in 2016 and has expanded beyond that uh, the uh, the applicant also um, never contacted uh, planning and zoning uh, about the expansion that he was undertaking. Uh, the applicant added entrances to a county collector roadway without notification of public works, the public works department or the planning and zoning uh, department. Uh, the property on the east, uh, property 14.06 on the aerial, uh, was bought uh, to be used as a buffer in between uh, his property, the applicant's property, and the property to the northeast on Metro Avenue. Um, that has now been expanded into with targets and lanes. Uh, and then uh, the property was, uh, both that property and the property to the north were not a part of the initial special use permit as the property to the north was not even in the applicant's possession at the time. Um, so in regards to that, staff rec recommends denial of case DEB 21055. I stand open for questions. Any questions of staff? The applicant is also here to speak on his behalf. Upon opening the public comment portion of this hearing, those of you who wish to speak either for or against this item upon recognition will give you a name and address each time you begin to speak. This is necessary since the public hearing is being recorded. The public comment portion of this hearing is now open. Will the applicant please come forward? Good evening, Silverstein, John, JP. I go by JP. Address? 14702 Timber Lane. Thank you. Um, just, just a couple things. First of all, I'd, I'd like to let everyone know that uh, um, this crew to the right of me, it seems like this was just happening a few years ago, and everything he has said about uh, what we've done didn't come off, you know, as I'm a villain back here. First of all, I bought the land on Metro so I could put a parking lot down there so there would be no traffic in our HOA, which you can see referenced by our HOA president. Um, we've had zero complaints. Uh, supposedly there was a phone call about the use on Metro. Uh, I asked for who that person was so I could try to work with them uh, and help them understand what's going on. There's more uh, street night racing on that street than there is you know, the trucks that go in there. Uh, our usage that he's talking about for the land of the east, uh, we did own that land through at the end of the process of the first uh, special use request. Uh, I don't think we owned it for this meeting, but we owned it for the county commissioner's meeting. Um, the target that is sitting on the east is 40 yards from my property. So it's 40 yards in, so there's still a buffer there. And the target that is there is a 48-inch block uh, for long-range shooting. 
so the buffer is still there. It's 40 yards down from my property line. Um, we understand that putting the drive in, I now understand that I was wrong. I didn't know you had to do that, so I apologize for that. Uh, Joshua made me aware of that last week when he came to visit. That's the first time I knew about it. Um, so there is a culvert there. I hired a crew to bring a two-foot galvanized steel culvert. It is packed with rock. It was done by a professional crew. I just didn't know I had that permit to do it. Um, but we've since applied for that. Um, like I said, you know, our business has shifted a little bit to the leaks. Um, I, and I wouldn't say that it is the focus of our business. The focus of my time in elevated archery is probably bow maintenance. Uh, I have people that drive up to two and a half, three hours for me to do maintenance on the bow. We are the only archery shop in Lovemore County that I know of. Uh, you can go to Cabela's if you want. Or places, there's other places in more <coughs> away. Uh, so the majority of my time is spent on bow maintenance. The leagues uh, are two nights a week or three nights a week. Usually it's two nights a week, once in the spring, once in the fall. So when we have leagues, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or, or Tuesday, Thursday, uh, there's 12 guys on the property shooting. Other than that, we don't have store hours. I'm appointment only. I don't have, you can't just drive up to my place. That's not how it works. You have to call and make an appointment. Yesterday I had two customers. Today I had none. Tomorrow I'm scheduled for one. So it's not like this is a drive up store. And the stuff that's in my shop that is for sale is usually the stuff that's required to do maintenance on a bow or build arrows. So you can see it in the photo if they pull it up for you. So we're not a walk in store. Can't just walk in and browse and do that. We're appointment only. Um, there is one thing I'd like to address, and it has to do with the hours of work. Uh, they are recommending that if you do approve this, that you approve it for certain hours, um, and that is for 1600 to 2000. I'm sorry, four to eight uh, Monday through Friday, and 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Saturday. I mean, I, I'm against this because we're appointment only, and a lot of the people that come to my place are second and third shifters. I mean, they're blue collar guys, so the appointments could be, you know, at 20 hundred when he gets off of work or can make it there or she. Um, so uh, because we're appointment only and don't have store hours, I don't want to be limited to a set work time. For the other reason, I'm retired. I work when I want to work, I don't work when I don't want to work. If I want to take my kid to the bus stop, I'm taking my kid to the bus stop, I'm not working. So, and that's it. Oh, the expansion that we've had. I do have uh, that property that we bought. We did put a platform down there, it's seldom used. Um, and then the one that is used is just off my one property, we call that the Elk platform. Um, that one I will admit to you that we've been using. The tall platform down on Metro, we don't use that much because it's hard for me as an individual to get targets down there, get them set up and get them back up the hill uh, just for one inch. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, sir? Any questions up the applicant? Yes, sir, you were talking about didn't like the hours of work we had printed here. What hours of work would you like to have? Sir, I, I'm appointment only. So, well, sure, I, but you can't do anything after dark, can you? No, sir, I don't do. There's no shooting after dark. Right. But someone can come pick up their bow at 20:30. You know, if a guy if a guy gets off shift at the railroad and he's like, "Hey, I'm driving home. Can I get my bow?" If it's not an interference in my personal life, then yes, he can drive by and pick up his bow and Goes. So basically, you're open 24 7. No, well, no, because I have a wife. <laughs> <laughs> I have a wife that dictates my schedule. But I don't generally, here's my hours that I will accept phone calls. From zero, at 0 08, I take my kids to the bus stop. I don't let anything interfere with that. From 0 08 30 to 1100, I'm in the gym, and nothing affects that. And then I come back and I work. 
So my, I, I, teach, I coach my kids softball, so right now, three nights a week, you can't come see me then. And then on the weekends, on Sunday, you're not going to see me. So Saturday, pretty much all day. And then any other time you call me if I'm free, I can help you out. Because it's the off-season right now. And in the off-season, I see two to three people a week. And lessons are starting to pick up now that the summer is here and kids are, their parents are pushing for lessons. COVID, we stopped on lessons. Are there conditions that listed on the report? Mm -hmm. Which is based off last year, last one. Yes, we have conditions. Those are the conditions. Is that from last time or is no. this? No, I think these are modif yeah. slightly modified. These are not from last time. Also, I think, um, and certainly the commission can clarify this in any way that we need to if the commission proposes to move forward with recommendation of denial or a recommendation of approval. I think those hours of operation are really geared towards when people are coming out to use the range, not someone stopping by to pick up their bow. Right. It's really the range, not... It was not the range the, hours, not... Uh, the, range, the range is never open past the dark. Yeah. Uh, now, can can somebody call me up right now and, and shoot the range uh, Saturday at 1400? Sure. If I've got an open slot and I'm not with my kid or with my family, but they're going to call and make an appointment. If you live in like a Saturday, which let's face it, that's when a lot of people try to shoot because they're not at work. Yeah. If you limit it to a three-hour thing, you know you're gonna you're gonna take away my flexibility to keep the numbers low. All right. And truthfully, this week I'll just give you an example. This week we have three people scheduled for the range. Three, not thirty, not forty, three. That's it. And you can see from in my packet that I put in, we pay our quarterly our quarterly taxes are like a thousand dollars a quarter that we pay. So we're not a big business. It's appointment only. There's, it's not Walmart. It's not Cabela's. Any other questions of the applicant? Thank you, sir. Thank you. We will now hear from those present wishing to speak in favor of this request. Now hear from those present wishing to speak in opposition to this request. Is there additional information to be presented? No, sir. The public comment portion of this hearing is now closed. Any questions or comments, commissioners? I didn't see any um, um, opposition or, uh, I should say opposition, complaints. Uh, we haven't had any complaints. We've had one person who called. She did not, she wouldn't give me her name or her address. She told me generally where she lived, but she did not want to be the bad guy, as she said. And her primary concerns were that the range had expanded. So I certainly don't want it to seem like we've just received tons and tons of phone calls. Um, that is not the case. We have received one one complaint. And, so what you. is the difference from, I mean, it was approved, it was right. doing it, and I know we changed it. So what's the reasoning really for denial now? The expansion the, of the, the business. Okay. is without coming back through it. One of the conditions of the previous special use permit, just like all special use permits, is that they adhere to what was approved. And changes or modifications to that, you bring it forward to staff, and then we determine whether or not that needs to go back through the process. Right. Um, These so were major changes. I mean, a couple of them were, you know, yeah, were pretty big. Am I, am I allowed to speak to her this time? Uh, only when we ask you to. Okay. okay. Question so from a staff perspective, uh, if, if this would have come back through and it was exactly the same, we would have recommended approval of it. Uh, but given the changes that happened, like I said, without coming to the county, has us concerned that, you know, what additional changes will there be down the road? Are there any safety concerns that on the new changes he made except for the road? I understand Don't that. Definitely. Again, that one property was it was purchased to be used as a buffer, um, and I understand that it's not being used just extensively. But part of the purpose of that was to make sure 
Um, generally speaking, I don't think we have safety concerns. Um, they're shooting downwards at a target, not you know straight. Nobody's out there seeing how far they can shoot um, an arrow by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and many of the safety concerns we had previously uh, five years ago, those were addressed then, and it's our understanding that those precautions are <coughs> mostly still being taken other than the expansion into those areas that were supposed to be used as a buffer. So the major concern is the road then and the driveways, is that correct? Yes, that absolutely needs to be remedied. That is definitely a safety concern uh, okay. with those driveways being uh, placed there. Did, do you still have the notes? Did you guys re review the notes from the first application? Yes. It, so correct me if I'm wrong here, but it seems to me we had a lot of opposition during that yeah. meeting. We did not. No. no. No, everybody was very supportive. Okay. I thought I thought we had a lot of concerns from the neighbors for the safety. No, actually, I was surprised we didn't. I, I remember that very well, and I think he was purchasing that other ground at the time yes. when he came yes. the first time, and he hadn't completed it yet, but he was in the, in the process of purchasing that other ground. Right. Yeah, but yeah, I, I remember it very well because I was kind of amazed. That Maybe I was thinking we were going to like that, that we didn't have more opposition to it. Yeah, so. Well, they don't want to be noise. Fine. No. <laughs> no, uh, no noise. No noise. Quiet. I've got a couple well, questions. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I have two questions. First one has to do with business hours. Uh, and might have to ask legal advice on this. Best way to determine would be say one hour after sunrise and one hour before. You know how would you address that? Well, for, you can do that for bow know, instructions only. Well, given the nature of the work, my suggestion might be since I do know that bows are used for hunting and hunters like to use twilight and dawn. Uh, basically, just state. I think you could put an hour prior to, you know, after sunrise, official sunrise, an hour before official sunset, or you could basically just uh, state no shooting uh, when light conditions do not permit. I don't know anybody can hit anything in the dark with a, well, you know, a yeah. firearm. We don't shoot in the dark. Yeah. So I think you could just put as light conditions permitting for safety. <clears throat> as soon as I like this down, I have another question. I just want to say one thing real quick. The, the sunrise, sunrise is at, or sunsets at 1845, you can still shoot to like 1950. So limiting me based on, on a set time, you know, after what they say a sunset is, that's deceiving because like you said, for hunters, uh, and I think th what Commissioner Hempel was looking at was perhaps uh, light conditions uh, conducive to safety. Is light conditions yeah. permit? Yeah. The we don't shoot in the dark at all, sir. You can't do it. It's impossible with the dark. Well, I was worded more about how I would word it if we grant this permit. Uh, the second thing is on the uh, recommend conditions with number five, uh, probably in public works number one, would that cover the tube? Yes. yes, that's right. Okay. Yes, so it's already been addressed, and yes. that is work. It, it is being addressed. Okay. okay, that's the only two questions I had. Anybody else have anything? <coughs> I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion, please. I move that the proposed special use permit, uh, DEV 21-055, be approved. That the findings on the Golden Factor are set forth. Staff report is adopted by Planning Commission and substantiated by facts, testimony, and evidence presented be adopted by the board and that the conditions set forth in staff report except for, i got to find that condition. Let me look at it here. Uh, number two. Number two, except in staff conditions number two, uh, the hours limited be 
uh, taken out and we say as light conditions permit. Second. Or you could say that E E N T and what's the other term? That's you can't say that. Navy lawyers. E E N T. Okay. I'm sorry. I can't hear you. In, yeah. in, in nautical twilight, if you want to be specific. Well, because there's no. Now my eyesight isn't what it used to be, but nautical twilight's pretty darn dark. That's looking at something on the horizon over yeah. water. Dude, when I was in the Army for 30 years, I've run thousands of ranges. I don't want to shut down my range, I promise you. you come out and... Well, I just wanted to get it for the record yes, what sir. we were going to put on it. That, yeah, I'm sitting there figuring out what 20 hour, 2100 hours is. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner, Commissioners, what you might want to do is, given the narrative that was presented to you, just state. Use of the range shall be hours of use of range shall be limited to uh, lighting conditions conducive to proper safety. Yeah. Okay, we'll add that to the motion then. I'll accept the amendment. Also, um, Commissioner, sorry if you could um, state the golden factors that you're that you disagree with staff on. Oh, We've yeah. recommended denial. Could you put them in front of me again? <clears throat> Probably fine. I can't remember how to work a computer. What am I doing? I forgot this special use permit. I might be able to find them quicker than you then. Yeah, you might. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, factors to be considered. I'm getting there. Here are your golden factors. I don't know if that's going to help. Okay, number one, character of the neighborhood. The character of the neighborhood is a subdivision primarily of the North Woods at Timber Lake, single-family neighborhood. Uh, the second thing we considered was zoning and uses of nearby property. Number three was suitability of the property for the uses to which it had been restricted. Number four, extent to the removal of the restriction will detrimentally affect nearby property. Five, length of time the property has been vacant is zoned. Six, relative gain to economic development, public health, safety, and welfare. Seven, conformance to the, conformance to the comprehensive plan. The future land use map indicates, okay, as residential. Eight, staff recommendations. Don't necessarily agree to that it does, but you know this was being used for that before, and there really hasn't been any complaints. Uh, I think number one is definitely does not fit. That it is something that it would does not fit the character of the neighborhood or small lot subdivision like that. So, Wait, so those were staff's concerns. So yeah. since you're making a recommendation against staff's recommendation, I was just asking these. Specifically, give us what you disagree with us on, so that we could notate that in the in the minutes. So we're back to me again. Well, really, yeah. Um, you have to say what you disagree with. Um, I don't know. I tell you what, I'm going to withdraw my motion. <laughs> <laughs> Think about this a second. You want to withdraw your say? Whoever made it? I made it. Okay. I can withdraw it, I guess. Give you a chance to restate. I guess my main concern is the fact that uh, the subdivision uh, HOA approved it twice. Yeah. twice. Two different presidents. I could have had my whole street here again to back it up, but I honestly didn't want 70 year old people sitting in the hallway for two and a half, three hours again. If they did last time, we've had zero complaints. My house is the last house. 
I bought the property behind me. Oh, I've looked at the addresses. I the left yeah, I've, I've looked at the addresses. Even know there's there. there. And where the shop is. They don't I, even know where people are there. <coughs> and it's a bow, like you said before. It's awful. What? If you wouldn't have good support and like that, it wouldn't have been approved the first time. Right. So we know you have support, but uh, when we look at the golden factors, it's kind of hard to say that that's the place that's it should be. Last time. That's the place it should be. The things that have changed is I've made changes to make it even more not an HOA. There's no traffic in my neighborhood. I made a major investment on land. David, do you have any help here? Well, commissioners, and I don't want to breed any discontent, but your staff's duty is to apply planning standards to uh, analyze rec situations. They make recommendations to you. Uh, your role is to evaluate the information provided to you by staff and the information provided to you by the applicants and those affected by it. Uh, all due respect, I, I work with your staff quite often. They are big boys and girls. If you wish to disagree with them, I think the only thing they're asking is that you give some articulation as to that disagreement and uh, and proceed. However, your role is to evaluate the situation as you deem fit, taking into account the recommendation of staff, but you are not bound by that. And if you disagree, you can simply state that you, know, you disagree with their, their recommendation on specific points of the golden factors, such as is the proposed use within the character of the neighborhood. If you feel it is, you state that. If you feel that there would not be any traffic impact, uh, adverse traffic impact, simply state that. And you go through the uh, other factors, relative gain to economic development, et cetera. I think the only one that would be a problem would be the first one. I think the la the uh the number seven is now a problem for me. Oh, that's a plan. <coughs> well, number number four detrimentally affecting nearby property. I don't see that. And it's, there's not an increase in traffic to the house, <coughs> so there's not a detrimental effect on nearby property. And the usage of the property has changed. You didn't do it without a permit, so that's a bad. But it didn't really change the focus of the business in the area. I don't see a detrimental effect on the on the area. That's where I, 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 don't, I don't follow that one. You could make a motion with that, Commissioner Barkowski. Take that out. If we're going to do a motion. I'll withdraw my motion. <laughs> I'm sorry, Commissioners. I thought you had withdrawn your motion already, Commissioner. Howell. Yeah, I did. Okay. I did. That's what I was telling you. He did. He did again, Mr. Chairman. I'll, I'll make a motion. I'll, I'll give it a stab at disagreeing with the staff here. Um, I, I make a motion that uh, we approve case number DEV 21-055 uh, with staff recommendations changing uh, recommendation number two uh, to uh, verbiage that was laid forth by. Council earlier on uh, operation uh, of the facility to be done um, during daylight hours um, to where it is safe to operate, safely operate. Um, factors to be considered. Character of the neighborhood. Um, <coughs> this is a subdivision, I totally agree. Um, but the uh, homeowner owns property on basically all sides to where the shooting is going to. Uh, take place, and so it has no detrimental effect to any of the other uh, property owners. Um, zoning issue, um, two and a half acres. Um, <coughs> see that, that that really plays into this. Suitability of the property, uh, to me, where we hang our hat on this is the uh, uh, HOA has not once but twice voice their approval of it so if it was um, going to be a problem with the neighbors or um, a problem with the uh, suitability and blending in with the neighborhood we would have heard from the HOA for sure um, increase in traffic um, this is uh, appears to be a very limited um, 
use as far as number of trips goes. And uh, if, if traffic was a <coughs> concern, we would hear hear from it from the other neighbors. Um, I don't think that this uh, business would generate much more traffic than um, somebody that likes to entertain. Uh, five uh, is not applicable. Um, six, uh, there is a gain to the uh, economic development, health safety. Uh, public health, safety, and welfare. It's providing the service that's needed in our county. It provides a little bit of tax to us. Uh, conformance to the comprehensive plan. Um, this is in a residential area. Um, if we didn't allow special use permits in residential areas, we probably wouldn't have any special use permits. Yeah, that's right. um, so, and maybe that's what we need to do, but that's not how we're doing things now. So. Um, and, and, and again, I go back to, um, I, I believe the comprehensive plan is a guide that we should follow, um, but there's always exceptions, and I think this is an exception. So I recommend approval. Second. You second it? Here. you second it? Okay. Can you put the uh, requirements or the conditions up again? Sir, can you come back up for a minute? Sir. <laughs> we have a uh, to approve your special use permit for another five years with these conditions with changing number two to uh, the hours of whatever was stated light hours um, you will have to address the, uh, the uh, number four to Applicants shall apply for permits for interest of Metro abide by the access management policy. You understand that? I, I've done it, sir. Okay. And uh, and public works is going to be addressed. That's uh, number five. Lord <coughs> Anderson with public works. That's that's part uh, of the driveway. That's part issue. of the driveway. Yes, sir. I, I understand. I did it. Okay. I did it out of ignorance, trying to be do something good. Okay. I didn't know I was breaking your wall. All right. Uh, you're, you're now know. That any changes have to come back, correct? Yes, sir. I understand okay. that fully. Okay, so I wanted to make sure that that's not something we're going to have to deal with again in five years from now, or if sooner, if you violate them, yeah. you can be it can be pulled at any time. Yes, sir. I understand. All right. Okay. Everybody understand the motion. We have a motion and a second to approve case number DEB twenty one dash zero five five elevated archery. Special use permit for elevated archery, and uh, with uh, nine requirements, looks like, and changing number two to whatever was the hours. Hour of light. Yeah. Hours of light. Any further discussion? John Matthews. Yes. Terry Bukowski. Yes. Mark Danny. Yes. Wolf Smith. Yes. Rocky Hempel. Yes. Tom Dials. Yes. Jeff Speed. Yes. And I vote yes. Motion carries seven or eight to zero. Eight to zero. Um, <coughs> the Board of County Commissioners consider this item on June thirtieth also. Yes. June thirtieth. 9 a.m. in the Lemworth County Courthouse. Any person wishing to file a protest petition must contact the Planning and Zoning Office. Protest petitions must be filed with Lemworth County within two weeks of this meeting. To be valid, the protest petitions must be signed by owners of 20% to the land area notification area. Anyone wishing to attend the meeting and to give public comment at that meeting must call the Board of County Commissioner's Office and make arrangements at least 24 hours prior to meeting. Good luck to you, sir, the 30th, 9 o'clock right here. Any time? Switch people? Yes. I, yeah. I don't have the sheet to fill out, so I guess you'll have to get it off the video. You. you got it? We're doing the uh, Yes. Mark. Mark. Thank you. We can reincorporate that if we need to. 
What's that? The map that had the little star on where each of them was. <laughs> yeah. Just one again? <sighs> no, oh, one Lord. Again. You might as well count zero. <laughs> hey, Crystal. Got more Crystal, what we need is just link the iPhone up. That's what I've been doing is looking them up. <laughs> we can make the map again. Location. Where all of them are at. We haven't done it in a while. Oh, I didn't do this one today. Are we all in? I'm going to assume. I think, I think so. Let me make one more, make one more call. Oh. Oh, okay. Good. Case number, I'm not sure we're on the one. Okay, case number DEV 21-019, Suresion Zoning Request, Mara 5 Zoning District to RR 2.5 Zoning District, on a track of land in the southeast quarter of the southeast quarter of Section 15, so the couch of 11 South, range 2 East of the 6 p.m., Lebworth County, Kansas, request submitted by David Lugin. Request uh, requires a public hearing. Public comment is listed, limited to three minutes per person. Staff report. Commissioners, this is a request for DEV 21-019. This is a rezoning request from RR5 um, Rural Residential Zoning District to Rural Residential 2.5. As you can see, it's located um, near 254th and Conley, which is directly adjacent to the Rocking Sea subdivision. Um, the character of the neighborhood is rural agricultural uses and rural residences. Zoning and uses of property, Rocking Sea Estates is zoned as a planned unit development and is used for rural residences. Um, also, many of the lots within Rocking Sea are developed as RR 2.5 as it currently sits. <coughs> um, the surrounding area is currently zoned as Rural Residential 5. The suitability of the property, properties within an area that is suitable for rural residences. So we're not asking for a significant change in the zoning district. Um, the area is not likely to be detrimentally affected. The proposed rezoning is in, con in conformance with the comprehensive plan. The property has not been developed and is currently used as agricultural land. Rezoning the property will allow for up to four residential lots. Um, again, comp the conformance to the comprehensive plan, this future land, future land use map indicates this area is rural residential two and a half and staff recommendation is for the approval of this. The applicant is here and will answer any questions we may have. Any questions of staff? Upon op opening the public comment portion of this hearing, those of you who wish to speak either for or against this item upon recognition will give you name and address and can begin to speak. This is necessary since the public hearing is being recorded. The public comment portion of this hearing is now open. Will the applicant please come forward? Joe Herring, Herring, Sir Herring, 315 North 5th Street. I'm the agent for Mr. Lugin. Uh, agree with the staff report. It matches the lot sizes across the street in the Rocking Sea, and it matches the comp plan, recently approved comp plan. Here to answer any questions. Okay. Questions of the applicant? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Can't hear you. Okay. Okay. He just pretty much said the report is what he, he pretty much said the report is what he is what he agrees with. So what what uh, Crystal read is saying. Is that am I getting that right? I can restate. Go ahead. Restate it. Speak a little louder. Talk to the mic. Uh, speak. Can you hear this? Is that better? Yeah. Just uh, basically said it matches the lot sizes across the street in Rocking Sea, and it matches the future comp plan. Okay. Thank you. We will now hear from individuals present wishing to speak in favor of this request. Anyone here wishing to speak in favor of this request? Anyone here wishing to speak in opposition to this request? In opposition. Please state your name and phone number, uh, and name and address for the record, and uh, you have three minutes. Uh, 
I'm Karen Sweeten. The address is 25605 Kansas Avenue. Um, I'm in opposition to this because the surrounding land is five acre minimums. We are going to start encroaching on the agricultural aspect of this area. Rocking Sea was a planned unit development. This is not a planned unit development. This is just a piece of acreage that's going to be rezoned for 2.5 and put, five, uh, put four homes up. There is other property from Des and the family that are going to be coming up. Developers are going to want that. Then they're going to be doing the same thing. It's a slippery slope. So you're going to be turning an agricultural area, a very rural area, now into basically homes that you might as well move into Tongi, or you might as well move into Baser, or whatever. And you're ruining the atmosphere of that, of that area and the preservation of it. You're also looking at the value of people's property. But it's going to decrease the property value of the people that have the actual acreage, as opposed to, <coughs> excuse me, people that are just coming in and having, you know, just 2.5 acres with a house on it, and that's it. I mean, it's, it's a different type of development that could go in other areas. It needs not encroach on this agricultural area. It needs to be preserved for the current property owners. The other thing is the feasibility studies for the water have not been done. We don't know if land will perk or if you need these leach pits. A lot of the land up and down Kansas Avenue, they're <coughs> leach pits. They don't <coughs> So if you're going to go into 2.5 acres and you can't put a septic tank in and you got to do a leach bed, then you're looking at other, other problems. There's problems right now with the water pressure going down. Just the chip and seal roads are having trouble keeping up with the uh, infrastructure for those and maintaining those. There's holes all over the place. Those roads were not built to increase the density in that area. So those are the reasons I am absolutely opposed to the 2.5 acres because it will do nothing but encroach on the future land sales that are coming up because of deaths and property transfers. And it will be a slippery slope. And I think you have a responsibility to look at the current property owners rather than future property owners. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Uh, Walter Sweeten, 25605 Kansas Avenue. I've uh, probably been out there the longest. I've got 20 acres that I've maintained. I've put a lot of money on my property. Next to me, I took care of a lady that she got sick. As soon as the inheritors got a hold of it, it went to five, four homes down, almost five. And what happens is my property goes into depreciation because of the turnover of the homes that go in there. And the problem we're having also out there is their animals, uh, their toys, and all the nonsense of not taking care of the kids. And so we're losing that aspect of what we put our value into our property uh, from all of the above. So I'm totally against this. And uh, I just thought I'd come tonight and say my piece. So I'm down with it, man. I've been out there since 1971. So put up with rock and seed. That turned out pretty good. But if you start passing two and a half acres, then they got the ability to turn that whole thing into uh, everybody's got five acres in there, and they've done well with it. But you start allowing them to have two and a half acre parsonages, there goes, there goes the neighborhood, in my opinion. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? This is senior. <laughs> yes, I am the senior. My name is Wilma Plake. I live at 17498 258th Street. I've been there since the same time, but 1971. And at that time, we bought land to as farmland and I am 
opposed to the 2.5 acres. I wanted to at least stay at five acres in order to not keep subdividing and subdividing this property. I have some questions as to septic tanks. I know that one house in Rock and Sea already has had to have their septic uh, uh, drained or whatever you call it, uh, pumped. And they have only been there maybe a year and a half. So if these houses can't pass the, the septic tank and they're going to keep pumping them out in a year and a half, and this is a small family. So I, I do have some questions regarding that. Also, um, since the Rock and Sea has been built, um, we are constantly having to put up with uh, ATVs is constantly driving around there. They think they moved to the country, but they bring all of that with them, and they drive them on the streets back and forth and back and forth all weekend long. That's what's going to happen again if we have another subdivision come in. This backs up to my property. Um, this is on my, I'm on a gravel road. I am not on a paved street. So all of those recreational vehicles are constantly flying up and down my gravel road. Um, there is another problem. How many times has that road, I don't know the name of the road, has collapsed that Rock and Sea has been built? It's collapsed several, several times. It's have to been rebuilt. That's going to be more traffic coming that way, and those roads will not sustain that traffic. Um, one problem that I ran into the other day was the fact that, and I had plenty of children of my own, but I come around the corner of 254th Street, and if you turn on the Kansas Avenue, that is a square turn. It is, um, what do you call it, a blocked turn? I drive slow there because I know there's plenty of children that live there. The children play in the streets in Rock and Horse. They, there's no sidewalks, there's no curbs, and there's lots of little children. God bless the little children. I come around that corner, there were two little tots riding their bicycle tricycles. Had I not been driving very slow, and the mother was jogging about a block away behind them. Mary, That's, your time's up. My time's up? Yeah. I'm just getting started. <laughs> <laughs> Not tonight. Not tonight, <laughs> okay. But I am opposed yeah. to the five acres of this um, piece of property because more right. will come. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Can I give her my time? She's got more to say. Uh, I don't think, I think we stopped doing that, didn't we? Yes, we did. Yeah. Is it the commission's yeah. discretion? Yeah, I think. I think we heard it, but you're welcome to speak. Okay. I should yeah. propose it. Anyone else want to speak in opposition? Suzanne Bergen, 25582 Kansas Avenue. I oppose this from, if they're going to do it, leave it at 5, but not down to 2.5. Good. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Is there any additional information to be presented? No, sir. The public comment portion of this hearing is now closed. Are there any questions or comments, commissioners? Or I'll entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion, Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I move that the proposed rezoning is outlined in case DEV 21-019 be approved, that the findings on the Golden Factor as set forth in staff report as adopted by the Planning Commission and test substantiated by facts, testimony, and evidence presented be adopted by the Board and that the conditions set forth in staff report be, pay, be part of this rezoning request. Now let me go to the golden rules here. Mm. 
Okay, factors that were considered besides staff's report was the character of the neighborhood, zoning and uses of nearby property, sustainability of the property for the uses to which it had been restricted, extent to which removal of the restrictions would detrimentally affect nearby property, five, length of time the property has been vacant as zoned, six, related gain to economic development, public safe, health, safety and welfare, Seven, conformance to the comprehensive plan. And that's it. But I would like to add all, well, I don't want to do it in the motion. So go ahead. That's in my, that that's my motion. A motion on the floor with the second to approve case number DEB 21 uh, 019, zoning request from R5 zoning to R2.5. Is there any further discussion? I think the biggest part it does meet the comprehensive plan that we just approved, the county just approved for that area, and that's what that's why we had the meetings and did the comp plan to decide where we want in certain areas, and that was one thing that was approved. So uh, a roll call vote. John Matthews? Yes. Dave Burkowski? Yes. Mark Danny? Yes. Will Smith? Yes. Rocky Hipple? Yes. Tom Dials? Yes. Jeff Stink? Yes. And I vote yes. Motion carries 8 to 0. The Board of County Commissioners will consider his item on June 30th, 2021 at 9 a.m. in the Leverwood County Courthouse. Any wish, anyone wishing to attend the Board of County Commissioners meeting or to give public comment will need to contact the Executive Secretary of the Board of County Commissioners at 913-684-0417 as space is limited. What was that number again? 913-684-0417. Six eight four. Six eight four. Zero four one seven. Zero four. And the meeting June is 30th? June thirtieth at nine a.m. right here, same spot. Perfect. And Thank they you. make the final decision. Okay, we need to move people in and out again. Nope. Uh, no, they're here. So we're ready to roll. Let's go. <laughs> ready to roll. Ready to roll. Yep. Nobody out there for this last one. <laughs> I've got, I got, I got five months old. I, well, no, he's six months old today. So, case uh, yeah. number DEV 21 051, consideration of zoning request for R245 zoning district to B3 zoning district on a track of land northwest quarter of the northeast quarter of section 12, township 11 south, range 21 east at 6 p.m. in Lumber County, Kansas. Request submitted by Red Fuel Repair. Requires a public hearing, public comment, limited to three minutes per person. Staff report. Approval. All right, gentlemen, before you, you have uh, a rezoning request from RR 2.5 uh, to B3. Uh, the applicant currently has a special use permit that was uh, expiring this year. <coughs> uh, and uh, they have submitted a rezoning request for the uh, for the property instead of renewing the special use permits. Um, surrounding properties on the north, east, and south are residences slash farms on various size parcels from five acres to 28 acres in size. Uh, land use uh, immediately adjacent is Kansas Heavy Construction. That uh, property is zoned B3 uh, currently. Uh, to the uh, two parcels over, let's see if I can have a Two parcels over uh, is a is a residence. Oh, I do have a mouse. Ha -ha. This parcel here is a residence. Um, these two parcels are also zoned B3. So within a very short distance, about 600 feet, there are uh, three different parcels that are zoned B3, which is what the applicant is looking to go to. Um, this is on State Avenue uh, slash Highway 2440 uh, within the corridor. 
uh, and this is uh, supported by the future land use map as a mixed use uh, zoning all along that corridor. Obviously, uh, you are aware that we want uh, the county wants to see development occur, uh, and this uh, meets the. County wants development to occur along this corridor. This meets uh, what the county's vision for the um, the properties along 2440 are. Uh, staff's recommendation is for approval of this rezoning. I stand open for any questions. <coughs> Kim is here to speak on his behalf, his and her behalf as well. Any, any questions of the staff? What is what are the conditions on the current site? That's a very good question. Um, off of the top of my head, uh, they let me say that they have met or exceeded the conditions set forth in the original SUP. Um, they uh, there have been no uh, there have been no I have a link to it in the current case. Uh, there have been no complaints on the property received by the planning and zoning. Uh, they have established a berm in front of their uh, in front of their buildings fronting 2440 uh, to help uh, mitigate uh, visual sight of the facility and of the, the buildings. Um, I thought I had it. And um, and uh, so we required a, I believe we required a berm. I'll throw this back to you guys. Um, and um, Probably based off of our knowledge of current uh, limited hours, um, but they have uh, they have there have been no complaints. They're provided by what has been presented to them, and they are looking for the security for their business to be able to um, be zone B three and to be an allowed use uh, instead of having the. How, how can you say there's no complaints? There's letters in here. Where we have received no, we have not we had not received complaints before thank you about the business. Yeah. about the prior to notification going out for the for the business uh, for the rezoning uh, there we have received no complaints about the business that's a more accurate they statement. didn't receive any complaints about the business during the shop during right. the SUP correct now they're, the only complaints they're getting is the rezoning not their business correct yes. correct right right yeah, yeah. And, and what they're complaining in, in reading these is that with the SUP, there was some control. And if you go to this business, it will not be the control, right? That, that's not, but that's not true. As I've stated several times, uh, one, they had to adhere to their site plan before. Um, they'll continue adhering to that. They've already built a berm. They've planted the trees. They've, they have adhered to their special use permit. If they wanted to add on, if they wanted to do something different, they would have to submit a site plan, and they are required to meet the requirements of our site plan, um, zoning and subdivision regulations. So this belief that if it's rezoned that they can just go out there and do absolutely anything and everything is, is not true. It's not true. Okay. So the short answer is they they did comply with everything on the site before. Yes, they have been, People yes. are complaining about that it's going to change that doesn't. They will no longer, if this is granted, they will no longer need a special use permit. Um, however, like I said, if they were to make amendments, you know, if they want to add on to the building or add on a parking lot or something like that, they would have to go through the site plan approval They'd have process. They have impact statement. Okay. <laughs> well, Correct me if I'm wrong, Crystal, but they really the only changes is we're not saying hours or we're not saying they have to work certain hours or certain days right. and stuff like that. Uh, they're... They're a business. They can work any hours they, they want to work. So that would be the, the difference from the special use permit and for what they have to now. But if they want to expand their building, they'd have to do a site plan or change their uh, business in some way. They'd have to submit a, a site plan. And is that all correct? Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Any other questions of staff? Upon opening the public comment portion of this hearing, those of you who wish to speak either for or against this item upon recognition will give your name and address. It's time to get to speak. This is necessary since the public hearing is being recorded. The public comment of the portion is now open. Will the applicant please come forward? 
Hello. We are Matt and Jenny Kessler. We live at 18648 207th Street in Tonganoxie, Kansas, 66086. Um, with your permission, I do have a sheet for each of you. Is that okay? To... It was included in the original information, but I was just going to be um, going back to that, so I wanted to make sure everybody had the same information in front of them. So we're requesting to rezone um, from our current special use permit to commercial to meet the future comp plan. Um, in the five years that we have established um, the shop down on State Avenue, we now employ five full-time we employ we have five full-time employees and two part-time. Um, as you can see on the sheet that was just given, seven over the last five years. 71% of the sales tax revenue that we've generated has come into Leavenworth County. Um, when we first started, um, we were more of a mobile business. We had a couple of service trucks and um, went everywhere. And now the majority of our business does come to Leavenworth County. So the location on State Avenue um, is beneficial to bringing in sales tax revenue. And just thank you for your consideration. Any questions of the applicants? Uh, can you tell me exactly what you do? Yeah. We uh, perform repairs on heavy equipment and some trucks, and we also repair the school buses for the Tonalasi School District. As well. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions of the applicant? Thank you. Thank you. We will now hear from individuals wishing to speak in favor of this request. Favor of. We will now hear from individuals present wishing to speak in opposition. We didn't have anybody phoning in, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Is there any additional information to be presented? No, sir. The public comment portion of this hearing is now closed. Are there any questions or comments, commissioners? I think this is the way it should be done, especially use permit. See how good the business can do. It's done well. Now it's time to rezone it. That is correct. Sounds like a good, good plan to me. Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to comment that when I look at the sales tax revenue being generated by this business, it's not just a mark of success of the business. I think it's darn patriotic. So thank you. David, does your blood sugar low? <laughs> I'll entertain a motion. No, I do Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. I'd like to make a motion that the proposed rezoning is outlined in case DV 21-051 be approved, that the findings on the golden factors are set forth in the staff report as adopted by the Planning Commission and substantiated by facts, testimony, evidence presented be adopted by this board and that the conditions set forth in the staff report be made part of this rezoning and the factors some of the factors we considered in the staff report was character of the neighborhood, zoning and uses of nearby property, sustainability of the property for the uses to which it has been restricted, extent to what the <coughs> removal of the restriction will detrimentally affect nearby property, length of time the property has been vacated to zone, relative gained economic development, public health, safety and welfare, Proposed use will add longevity to the parcel. Okay, uh, conformance to the comprehensive plan, the future land use map indicates this area is mixed use. That's my motion. Second. We have a motion on the floor with a second to approve case number DEV 21-051. Uh, rezoning request from uh, R2.5 building district to B3 zoning district. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. John Matthews? Yes. Terry Bukowski? Yes. Mark Danny? Yes. Uh, Will Smith? Yes. Yes. Rocky Himple. Yes. Tom Dials. Yes. 
Jeff Speed. Yes. And I vote yes. Motion carries 8 to 0. The Board of County Commissioners will consider this item on June 30th, 2021 at 9 a.m. in the Lemberth County Courthouse. <coughs> anyone, anyone wishing to attend the Board of County Commissioners meeting or give public comment will need to contact the Executive Secretary of the Board of County Commissioners at 913-684-0417 as space is limited. Good luck to you and it's uh, June 30th, 9 a.m. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Your last vote, John? That was your last yes. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs>